Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're gonna be switching gears here um, and working on my uh, daily driver slash family hauler slash tow pig. Um, it's a 2002 Ford Excursion Limited four wheel drive and it's got the V10 in it. And uh, there's a bunch of little projects that have been piling up on this that I need to get to. Um, one of the biggest ones is the the back or the second row seating. Um, on these, there is, it's a 60-40 split right now. Um, and uh, the middle seat does not have a shoulder belt. It's only got a lap belt. And I've got three kids and two of them are still in child seats. One's in a booster. Um, but the two in child seats are both getting close to uh, booster time and for those you need a shoulder belt and there is no real um, good solutions in the aftermarket to install a shoulder belt however the um, I believe it's um, I'm spitballing here but I believe it's 2003 up expeditions their second row seat is almost, from what I've read, almost a bolt-in. So I've got a second row out of, I think, like a 06 Expedition. Um, tan, it's, I don't think the tan is exactly the same, but it's close enough. And um, so we're going to get these seats taken out. And I actually started this project a couple days ago. Um, only to find out that, of course, I need a special bit. These Torx bits, um, actually not even Torx, they're Torx Plus, are what holds in the seat. And, um, you know, there's, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so there's a, there's a pile of them, okay? There's like at least a dozen, maybe 14 or so. Um, all those have to come out, and like I said, they are a Torx Plus, and so they're a TP55. Naturally, I only had Torx bits, and I think the biggest one I had was a 45, so that immediately stopped the project. Um, all I did really was vacuum her out a little bit, and I got all of the plastic cladding and plastic handles and, and trim off of the bottom of the seat so I could access everything. Um, that was a handful of Phillips head screwdrivers and the, that all came out. Um, so now we're going to actually go ahead and get these damn seats out. And then, uh, after that we'll, uh, test fit the expedition seats and see if and where I need to drill holes, um, and stuff like that. So, uh, we'll see how things line up here and, uh, I'll get back with you, but in the meantime, um, I think I'll do a little time lapse for you so you can keep tabs on my frustration. All right, thanks, guys. All right, so here we are with the seat set in place. Nothing's bolted down or anything. Um, and this angle you see here, that is actually going to come up like this because here and here it'll pivot and kind of do this as it comes back. So the base back here will come up. That will come down and it'll level out as it pivots backwards. Um, right now, I'm just trying to get a feel for, you know, space behind, space in front. Um, got a good amount of space between the seat and the door panel. Let me give you a shot here. So you can see we got, let's see, there's a good, oh, yeah, there's a good amount of space there. And I can stick my my hand in there, no problem. You know, up here. So maybe I'll throw a, a kid seat in there just to make sure we've got clearance all around. But that looks pretty darn good, I think. Um, and I have that plate, that remote plate, sitting basically right where I hoped it would. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'll check that child safety seat and just make sure there's clearance there. And then uh, if that clears, I'm going to drill holes for this rear plate and then um, get that bolted down. 
that way I can get this front bolted down and that will give me my mount locations. Um, the only thing I'm concerned of up here is there's this giant plastic plug and depending on where things fall, one of my mount holes could end up right on that thing, which is not what I want. Um, granted, there's three more holes in this base plate up here, but I'd prefer to use all four if possible. So um, we'll see what we end up with here. Catch you guys in a minute. All right, guys, we're back in the vehicle and everything seems to look like it's gonna work pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, I'm just gonna trace this out. Um, the holes, the outline, everything like that. I wanna see, there's some, you can see there's some sound deadening material here. I'm just gonna scrape that out so this thing sits as flat as possible on the floor. And uh, I'm also gonna just mark here because I wanna clearance that a little bit so I don't have this front edge trying to, you know, gouge its way in there, or bend up on the ribbing there. So um, basically I'm just to the beginning of the curve here on the outer edge of the floor. So that'll sit flat. Um, for those that are curious, uh, this is a 2002 excursion. Um, I would imagine 99 through 05, all years of the excursions, the floor is the same. Um, so this should apply to pretty much all of them. Um, the, the seats I have are out of an 04 Expedition and that's where these mount plates came from as well. So I think 03 to 05 Expeditions kind of fall in that same group. Um, the, the, as far as the seating goes, I had a 2016 Expedition um, and those seats are almost identical to these ones. So I'm guessing that these brackets and the seats for at least the second row in the expeditions cover a huge span of years. Um, but I'll kind of leave that up to you to figure out what's going to work for you. Um, but as far as the holes in the floor go, none of those match up. So that's a, a moot point. I, I had read somewhere that you only had to drill a few holes. Well, we are going to have to drill all the holes because nothing's going to line up. Not a big deal because having this bracket and having the front mounting pad on the seat, it's fairly straightforward. It's a little work, but it's pretty straightforward. So um, I'll shut up now and just get to work here. And after I get all this mounted and drilled out, the old holes from the excursion, um, I'm gonna just go ahead and fill those with a bolt, um, probably like a stainless bolt and put some anti-seize and whatever on there, make sure it's sealed up good. That way there's no moisture getting up through those holes and getting into the floor. Um, we don't want any hidden rust creeping its way in. I really like these uh, these Milwaukee Inksol pens. Um, I used Sharpies for a long time, and they just, uh, on certain surfaces, they just don't work very well. Um, they just don't write if anything's got a little bit of oil or grease or something on it. Um, these Milwaukee ones are awesome. They write on just about anything. And I'm just now noticing that some of these holes are different sizes. Not the end of the world, but just an FYI. It looks like this, this front hole here is bigger than the rest of, or smaller than the rest of them, sorry. And I'm just gonna outline where these mounting pins are too. Just because I'm anal like that. I like to know where everything is, whether it makes a difference or not. And it's not like this is gonna be seen, so. Okay. 
So now we have our nice little outline. You can see I'm going to be covering one, two holes from the excursion seat and then the corner of the mounting bracket just kind of comes over this hole here. So um, yeah, for something like something like that I'll have to come up with a, uh, a flush mount bolt or something or maybe I'll just come up with a bolt from the bottom side and let it sit flush with the floor you know I'll do that with all of them that probably makes more sense than anything um, okay so now we drill holes fun sound deadening the razor blade I don't know if you've ever worked with this stuff but it sucks it is like I don't know what it's like we used to have this uh, if you were ever in the military on a Navy ship they had this stuff in the bulkheads they called it monkey crap and it's this thick tar like really stiff substance but it was watertight this is pretty similar to that um, so it sucks to cut through, it sucks to scrape up, it's super sticky, and it's just generally a pain in the ass, usually. Um, yeah, this actually wasn't terrible, so. Sure, this can sit down nice and flat once we get it in there. And as you know, you're not supposed to cut towards yourself. Blah blah blah. That's my that's my safety speech for the day. Good luck. car that easy. Okay, so there's those. Take the sliver off over here. Okay. All right, test fit again here. some clearancing spots on the bracket here. Do that quick. Flies are horrible. Driving everybody around here insane. So if I'm waving my arms around like a lunatic, that's why. for the relief so I'm gonna just hit that with the flap disc quick and get some reliefs in there so we clear these two bumps right here um, now um, so the bolts that are in here these are uh, show you guys here in case I didn't show you before so they're at TP 55 not TP for your bunghole um, and the, the uh, Torx Plus, or the TP, if you look at the end of that, you see how the tips, they're not sharp, they're more squared off. Um, that's what these are. So these are the TP Torx Improved Bolts, or a TP55. Um, some guys say they can get a regular Torx to work. 
if you don't have rusty bolts, it probably will work, but I would bet that if there's any bit of rust on those or any bit of uh, anything gumming up the threads, you're gonna either destroy your Torx bit or the head of that bolt pretty quick. Um, another thing I use all the time is, especially building the race car, is uh, this little gauge, because it's got metric and uh, SAE size bolt holes and you know, it's got uh, millimeters up here across the top, inches across the bottom. You got all your gauge size, like this is an M12 bolt in the floor here for the seats. Um, I'm gonna end up with uh, half inch holes in the floor just because that's the, uh, my step bits are all, uh, none of them are metric, so um, not a huge deal. Just a little bit of clearance there, which is fine because I'm sure my holes won't be dead on center. Um, but that is a super handy little deal to have if you deal with a lot of nuts and bolts that you don't know sizes on. Um, and then lastly, this little deal, if you do a lot of drilling holes, this is a nice little deal to have too. Little center punch. And it helps to get it actually in the center. That's better. One more thing I'll say is when you're gonna do something like this and you're gonna drill through a floor, don't go drilling blindly through your floor. Get underneath and just see, make sure you don't have any uh, fuel lines, brake lines. Um, in this case, all the AC lines for the back run down this side, um, but I'm pretty sure they're over here past, um, over here on the outside edge. Um, but just check and see, make sure there's nothing under there because otherwise this turns into a much bigger project and a, a lot more headache. Uh, let's throw this back on here one more time and just retrace one of my holes because it was traced onto the sound bending material. And it's much easier to find the center of the hole when you have the whole outline of the hole. There we go. That's better. I always hit it a couple times with the center punch, just to be sure. Usually on sheet metal, it's not a big deal. It usually leaves a pretty good imprint, um, especially aluminum. Uh, if you're working on like some hardened steel or some thick stuff, it doesn't always leave the best imprint the first punch. So, um, and then, I also like to do a little pilot hole, just cause Experience has taught me that it's always better to do it with a pilot hole in a small bit and then jump to your uh, step bit. Especially with the step bits, these just don't seem to uh, drill into, um, you know, undrilled material as well. It doesn't like creating its own, own hole as well as a regular bit does. Um, but once you've got like a pilot hole there, these things just tear through sheet metal, no problem. So. Uh, I'm going to take a quick peek underneath and see what we got. And wouldn't you know it? As I made mention of the AC lines, they really do come out on the edge here and right here where I'm going to be drilling, they come up and then back. So um, there's about two inches of clearance between the bottom of the sheet metal and the top AC line, but I'm going to go just grab like a little piece of wood or something to set above the AC line just in case. Um, I don't even think my bit might be just long enough to touch it, but just to be sure. Some holes. And hopefully I don't break the bit. Just through. And I 
I broke my bit. There you have it. I hate small drill bits. All right, next. I'll go up a size here. Hopefully that doesn't, uh, that's a little more resistant. I just use some cheap penetrating oil to spray the bit, use it as kind of a cutting oil. Helps to keep the bit a little cooler, so it cuts better. Piece of wood. Alright, so on this one, it felt like I hit something, but there's actually just a, uh, there's a channel underneath there, a sheet metal, a little box, so it comes up and then flanges, so it's actually just two pieces of sheet metal right here. at my holes just to make sure This one actually is in a terrible spot. Um, it's a smaller hole. So that box channel underneath there comes to about here, comes up, and it folds over and it sets against the bottom of the floor, but the edge of this hole is literally right against the vertical section of that box. So once I get the hole all drilled out, um, it's gonna, it's gonna be sitting, the washer's gonna be up against that box, which is not gonna be ideal. So 
I may have to, I might relocate this. Instead of using this hole, I might drill a hole over here. Just so I have, otherwise I have nothing on this corner. Um, I should probably have something there. So, yep, I think we're gonna do that. So I'll double check underneath here. that's inside the channel and I'd have to drill through that channel then I open that channel up to rust and stuff all right let me uh, take a look at this and see what else I can figure out all right guys we're gonna add another twist to this so earlier you see this mounting plate you can see the outline here where I had it lined up um, which essentially puts the back of the chair here um, and that still give a fair amount of legroom up here but the more I thought about it and looked at it back here, there's this ledge for the back cargo area. And that would have created a lot of dead space. I mean, I essentially would have had, you know, from that ledge all the way up to this little lip here would have just been dead space, which is how the excursion is right now. Um, there's actually a, uh, uh, a little, a mat, a floor mat that covers that whole strip. So it, it, uh, I'm guessing that is where the footwell is for the third row seats, just based on where all that stuff is. Um, but since I'm kind of doing my own thing here, I think even though I drilled these holes, I'm gonna move everything back here. This hole right here, I'm gonna utilize the seat belt um, bolt for and then I'll drill holes for the other ones back around there. Um, and I think that's going to give me a lot more options because all that box channel underneath the floor, I don't think that's gonna be as much of an issue over there. Um, the other thing I just noticed as I was doing this, if we come underneath the bracket here, you can see right in there, um, actually, let me grab a flashlight quick. see that okay that is the bottom section of this little guy here um, granted it's sitting at an angle right now I don't know that could be an issue because if it's like the excursion one you have these cutouts in the floor for everything to move around that post so I'm gonna have to sit this thing up in its actual position um, to see if that's gonna sit below the floor or not. Hopefully not. Um, Cause that would really suck. Cause that would mean I would have to cut out a section of the floor and create a little boxed area underneath it for that to move freely around that mounting pin. <sighs> All right, well, we'll do some more investigating. We'll get back to you. Thanks again. All right, everyone, today is a new day and we're back at it in the excursion. Um, you can see this is where I had originally planned to put the mounting plate. And after some review and looking at things again, I decided to move it back here um, because there's this step there. And this entire space would have essentially been just dead space. Um, the this is this is what's originally the footwell for the third row seats, um, but I'm going to have a single seat on this side mounted a little further back. And um, right now my daughter's only eight, so she doesn't need miles of legroom. But we'll still have it back far enough; an adult could sit back there and. Uh, still have plenty of space to stretch out but um so what i'm gonna do is as i mentioned yesterday this is the hole for the seat belt we're going to utilize that and I'm gonna come over here and drill a hole here in this one 
and we will utilize this as well. Um, this hole, as I did on the other side already, I've already got that side drilled out. This one needs to be as far forward as you can get it without getting your mounting plate all out of whack and kitty wampus. Um, because right on this edge here is one of those box sections underneath the floor. Um, and on the other side, I, I got lucky. I'm going to have just enough room to get a nut on that bolt on the bottom side. And um, I'll, I'm probably going to have to like bend the washer over or something to get it to fit in there. Um, it's going to be tight. But if you go any, if you go too far back, you're going to end up trying to drill down through the vertical wall of the box section. So this is really the best bet. Otherwise. You end up like over here. Yeah, you could drill a hole, but then you're going through that boxed section, which if you had a long enough bolt might be okay. But below that boxed section is then a huge cross member. Um, so unless you're willing to drill holes in your cross member and go that route, um, it's just, you don't have many options here, um, putting the, the mount back this far. And this little lip here, this little rise, um, which is a uh, little, maybe three eighths, half inch or so. Um, it's enough of a bump to where you either have to mount this back here or in front of it, like I had before. And this section would have been okay, but I don't think it leaves quite enough legroom up there for adults. And frankly, I'd, I'd like to have as much legroom as possible in case I have adults sitting back there or anything. So, um, but anyway, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get these other holes drilled <clears throat> and, um, then we will kind of mock everything up with the seats and then work on getting the fronts drilled. So we will be back. Hey everyone. Welcome back again. Um, this is going to be the last update on this for a little while. I am just <laughs> running into issue after issue here. Um, so what's really holding me up now is I've actually got a good location figured out for the third time. And, uh, but the big hiccup now is that this bit here, okay? So as this mechanism pivots back there, okay, this pin, it, it pivots on that pin. And as that pivots back, these little tabs that catch the pin, they rotate and they end up underneath the surface of the plate here. So to be able to get that to move freely, um, I need to get some spacers in here. Um, I've got a piece of three inch flat stock or three eighths inch flat stock underneath the back right now. Um, and I'd need to do three quarters of an inch under the front here to get everything level. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just fighting me the whole way. You can see there how that little bit is underneath the surface of the plate. So if I don't allow that to have some space underneath there, these latches won't latch onto the bar and the back of the seat will just be flopping around, which obviously you don't want because when you hit the brakes, whoever's in that seat is gonna go flying forward. Um, you know, bad day for them. So I will uh, devise a, another half-baked plan here and um, more than likely I'm gonna get some bushings to use for spacers and or use some flat stock and weld everything together and then bolt it to the floor but uh, we'll see here um, I've got lots to think about and I just a matter of coming up with the best way to execute this now so once I do that I will uh, get you guys back and you can see see what we come up with all right thanks <laughs> 